Hey guys, even here, and as you all probably know, Blessing of Oribu won Indie Pro. So we're gonna talk about him, the improvements that he made, the statements that he made after winning the show. We're gonna talk a little bit about Justin Rodriguez and where he placed and the other guys. So uh, I gotta say, this was an awesome win because, first of all, Blessing of Oribu is not just another bland bodybuilder with no personality uh, who just lifts weights and, you know, doesn't have anything to say. On the contrary, Blessing of Oribu is a great showman, you know, he's a funny guy, he has a personality, he has things to say and he said quite a few things after winning this show. He wasn't humble before and he's not gonna be humble after winning this show, that's for sure, his ego is gonna go up to the clouds and some of you will love him for it, some of you will hate him for it, but you know, at least you have something to hate or love, it's better than nothing which would basically be the case if Charles Griffin won this show. Also, I gotta say, Blessing of Oribu, I mean, he had a pro debut last year, and he was top 3 at this very show, and now he won this show. So the improvements that this guy made, you can say that he was an underdog before, and he made crazy improvements. Also, basically, nobody saw him winning this show, very few people have. I mean, I was making my videos and I was saying, yeah, he has a chance, but I wasn't so sure if he can actually pull it off. I didn't expect this, honestly. I am surprised. And I didn't expect that he's gonna look this good on stage. I did see that he made improvements, but this much, I didn't see this. I didn't expect this. So he won this show very deservedly. It was a great show. Uh, I think he made it fun, you know? He really made this show interesting. Before we keep going guys, let me introduce to you classic BCAAs product by the old school apps and I just wanna tell you guys, if you wanna train really hard, you better have something in your bloodstream, something like BCAAs and also if you just wanna drink something refreshing and tasty and also beneficial for you, this watermelon flavor is just absolutely amazing and refreshing. So guys, if you wanna support me and my channel, use the code EVAN and click on the link in the description of this video and buy this product, try it out. Thank you guys, let's go. Right after stepping off that stage and bringing his trophy home, he already called some people out, let's say 7 people. So, as you can see, he commented on this uh, buys and tries post and he says basically, they all doubted me? Warning shot to all the Mr. O top 7, I'm coming. And I still got so much to improve on, shake my head. So, he basically says that the top 7 should be scared of him, he warns the top 7. Now, does that mean that the top 3 should be afraid? No, top 5, top 6, no, top 7. If he thought that he can be 6th, he would say top 6. If he thought he could be 3rd, he would say top 3. If he thought he can win, he would just say big gravy. But he said top 7. And who was the 7th guy last year? It was this guy, this freak, Ian Valier, and I am not saying that Blessing of Oribu quote unquote called out Ian, no, he just said top 7, and it just happened so that Ian is 7th at the Mr. Olympia, so can Blessing of Oribu beat Ian Valier? I really doubt that, I don't think so, I, I think he won this indie pro, it wasn't really a tough show to win, Charles Griffin... You know, Charles Griffin made some great improvements, but he's not exactly a top pro bodybuilder, let's be honest here. So as you can see right here, this is his 2021 version compared to his current version. So the main change here was learning how to do a vacuum, which definitely helped a lot. You know, it made his waist look smaller, it made his wee taper look better, and he was able to hide those uh, incredibly asymmetrical and... Um, not aesthetic, horrible looking abs, so that was a great thing for him that he learned how to do a vacuum, and also he, I think he did grow his legs a little bit more, or they just look bigger because his waist is smaller, I don't know, his legs are not great, and his structure is not improved, like it's the structure, you can't change that, but did he make improvements, did he come better, sure, but even though he is in this game for very long, a new beginner, basically a rookie like Blessing of Oribu with better structure, uh, if he puts on some muscle and comes in shape, beats Charles Griffin. So that's, I mean, he's he's a pro and you can call him like a top pro, but he's at the very bottom of that top pro level, let's say. Um, he comes conditioned. He was conditioned last year and he was conditioned this year, but for some reason his glutes are never really diced, you know, he never really shows crazy striations in the glutes, 
but that's not the reason why he's losing, <laughs> why he lost this show also, no, it was definitely the structure, from behind, he basically won those two shots, back, back double bicep and back lat spread, but it was still not enough. In third, you had Max Charles, and yes, Max Charles even beat Justin Rodriguez, who was supposed to win this show, and Max Charles doesn't have the best structure, I mean, he has some great shoulders, chest and abs and arms, but back, not very good, legs, pretty bad, uh, he was simply more, he was just sharper and harder than Justin, who was completely off, and that's how he placed in that top three, so what I'm trying to say here is that the top three at this show wasn't exactly super high caliber, I'm not trying to take anything away from Blessing, he looked amazing, but top 7 at the Mr. Olympia, you know, beating Ian Valier, that's a really tough task, um, if he made these kind of improvements in one year, maybe he can make more improvements until the Mr. Olympia, with this current look, Indie Pro winning uh, look, uh, can he beat Ian Valier at his best? No, I don't see that happening. Is his structure better than Ian's? I would say yes. Once he fulfills his full potential, I believe he will be better than Ian. His current look and what is probably going to be his look for 2022 Mr. Olympia is probably, in my opinion, not gonna be enough to beat Ian. I mean, this is Ian right now, it was posted by his coach Patrick Tour, and Patrick says that he made additional 5 pounds of muscle, uh, and he says it in a way that it looks like he made 5 pounds more than he made last year, so let's say last year he made 4 pounds, and this year he added 9 pounds in an offseason, which I don't think is impossible, because he was 3, I think 3 or 5 this year, which is by far the heaviest he has ever gotten in an offseason, I think last year he was around 290, and he didn't really lose the condition, he was still pretty lean in the offseason, watery, sure, but lean, as you can see at the start of his prep, he still has some glute striations, for God's sake, so he's in a good shape, really big, this is going to be the best Ian for sure, I mean, this guy is, uh, is a perfect example of a try-harder, I mean, he does have great genetics for building muscle, and his most muscular, his side chest and his side tricep look absolutely amazing, well, the other poses don't really look that good, but he works really hard, and he has a ton of muscle, he can come really dry, so for Blessing to beat him, you know, he needs to do a lot of homework, and I don't think that's gonna happen this year, and uh, I'm thinking Ian is probably gonna leap forward, I don't even think Ian is going to be 7th again this year, but we'll see though, it's a very competitive lineup, I mean, uh, the top 7 at the Mr. Olympia, that's really hard to crack. Back to Indy Pro, so the, the, the favorite to win this show was Justin Rodriguez, it was just logical, I mean, he was 8th at the Mr. Olympia, uh, he was 2nd at Boston Pro right after William Bonek, and it was a close battle basically, so of course, obviously, everybody thought this is going to be an easy win, for Justin, he came, he came in completely, completely and totally off, why is that, well my best guess is he was simply not fresh because he competed recently, he tried to maintain the conditioning and somehow he messed it up, he messed it up bad, like there was no strations in his chest, in his legs, uh, in his stomach, uh, some people in the comments are saying he, he ran out of oil, uh, because he, he put a lot of oil in his legs, probably, I don't know about the shoulders, but probably in his arms, um, and that was not it, maybe he put in too much oil because he lost the details, I'm just joking, he was just off, you know, and he made a statement here, and he just says, there are no excuses, it just wasn't my day, but next week at the New York Pro, he will show up, and if he is consistent as he was uh, years before, he always looks better at the next show, he was not very good at the Arnold, but he improved significantly for that Boston Pro where he was second, and if there wasn't a super improved version of Bonac, he would have won that show and he would have been done, he could have taken a rest and just tried to improve for the Mr. Olympia, unfortunately he had to compete again, and of course he didn't peak properly, Will he be able to win the New York Pro? I don't know, at this point, I mean, he looks way off. If he somehow completely dries out and comes in hard as nails, he might win that, win that show because it's not gonna be very competitive again. 
before he said anything about uh, picking for New York, Pratt Wilkin made this story, maybe just in Reddit, and that's why he didn't make any statements. This is what Brett Wilkin has to say about the, the whole thing, pretty much. I mean, he wasn't very specific who he was talking about, but we can all make a pretty good guess it was about Justin. So he says, one of the most annoying and inaccurate statements when watching a pro bodybuilding competition is when somebody says he's a little off right now, but he must be peaking for New York show next week. This has never made sense to me. Why would the athlete not be picking for that day to win the show he entered to win the prize money and automatically qualify for the Olympia instead of setting up the peak for the next week? It just reeks of excuses and lack of intelligence when this statement is made. He didn't really call out Justin. He called out the people who are saying that Justin didn't peak intentionally. And, of course, he's right, I mean, Brett is right, if you're thinking that, you're wrong, he didn't do that on purpose, but it happens sometimes that bodybuilders don't really peak at their first show, they need to diet a little bit more, they need to do something else, maybe they need to just uh, relax a little bit more, and the next show, for whatever reason, I'm only guessing here, for whatever reason, sometimes some bodybuilders peak better later. Uh, Ian Valier, for example, last year, his first show, I believe it was Tampa, he won it, but he wasn't his best, at Texas, though, he was shredded and full and hard, but then later at the Arnold, he was also very conditioned, but a little bit smaller and less full, and then at the Mr. Olympia, probably a little bit worse, so this is, the ta this is probably gonna be the case with Justin... He probably came in a little bit too full, he, he probably overcarbed, he didn't diet enough, and now he has a week to deplete, to do more cardio, to get more conditioned, and then not to mess it up, not to carb up too heavy, and to just improve. I don't think that was the plan originally, why would it be? Well, maybe he did do that, because he really wants that New York Pro win. Last year, it got away because of Nick Walker, and he made a, a statement, basically, he, he, he spoke about it, he said he really wants to win the New York Pro, because I think he lives in New York, and he really wants that title, he failed last year, and maybe he wants to do that this year, and here's the thing with Justin, he always comes in shape in the last week, so maybe him and his coach agreed that if he uh, dieted down completely, and he came completely shredded for the indie pro, maybe he would look worse for the New York, so they agree that they won't push things too much for the indie, and then they will try to peak properly for the New York, and let's believe that this is the plan, let's believe that we will see Justin at his absolute best at the New York pro, can he win this show? Again, it is a possibility. I'm not saying that he was not conditioned for this show. I think he was simply not dry enough. Maybe he can get a little bit more conditioned. And if he peaks properly, that's going to be probably enough for him to win the New York title. And he really wants it. He wants it bad. And I know that he is willing to do whatever it takes. And he will do just that. Anyways, back to Blessing of Audible. If you were wondering exactly what kind of changes he made in that one year, here you go. So he definitely added more muscle. Take a look at the lats. There is a lot of a lot of new muscle there. Chest also looks fuller. His arms actually they, they looked better for this show because he were more he was more conditioned and harder and fuller, but I don't think they grew that much. I mean they probably stayed the same. And they were very dominant before. I mean, these biceps in the front double bicep <laughs> just look crazy. And legs. He definitely made changes in legs. Legs look bigger, more separated, harder, fuller. And whatever, whatever thing uh, George Ferret did in that uh, peak week, it worked. It worked very well. He looked so hard, full, conditioned, separated. Uh, his waistline looks smaller. Look at the size difference. What the hell did happen here? Did everything just grow that much? Probably. I mean, his head also looked bigger before, now it looks smaller. You can't really see these fine details uh, as far as uh, added muscle, but you can see the difference between uh, his head compared to his uh, body and his waist and his wrists. So he definitely added a ton of muscle in one year. Oh, and another very interesting thing from this show, the runner-up <laughs> in 212 division... Uh, this guy uh, looked like this, yes, he looked like this, this is not a photoshop, what is going on with those legs, with those quads, I mean, they are looking very freaky, uh, all his side and back shots look really impressive, I'm not saying this guy looked bad, but 
His legs look photoshopped, they look warped. I don't know what the hell did happen to those legs. Is this just genetics? Is it sight enhancement? I don't know. But calves also flat like Dennis Wolf calves and really big, uh, big quads. But what is wrong with them? I'm not sure. They, they look really weird. Funny, I would say. Freaky, though. This guy looks really freaky, really big and full and conditioned. But something is, well, I don't want to use the word weird. But something is off, <laughs> because weird is a mild word for what is going on here. I don't know, if you guys have any idea, if you follow this guy, you know what is the thing with his legs, tell me in the comment section down below. Anyways, overall, it was a great show, a great win for Blessing of Audible. And if you guys enjoyed this video, tell me in the comment section down below, or like this video also, and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.